Thank you so much for having me in Cologne. Welcome, everybody, and I hope you're all awake. I'm very grateful that I can uh, talk to you today and introduce you to the city of Weil am Rhein, which is located right on the Rhine River bank. I have 10 minutes walk from my office to Switzerland and 10 minutes walk to France. So there is uh, no city, I say, more European than the one that I come from. It's a small town in comparison to the big urban areas in the world. We only count about 31,000 inhabitants. 20% of our inhabitants are younger than 18 years of age. About 20% are also older than 65 years of age. So we have to address both sides of the society. Now this picture I show to tell you, can you tell me where there is France, where there is Germany, where there is Switzerland? Oh no, you can't. Definitely not. And this is why I show this picture. Because if when I look into this room, I can't tell which nationality you are. I can judge maybe by your age, but not your nationality. So this is very significant and important to me. This is the mission that we have in Weil am Rhein. We want to be Europeans of every day's life. To solve the, the, the question, to the right side, this is France, to the left side is Germany, and in the north, so-called in the south, in the upper part of the picture, that's Switzerland. And the bridge across the Rhine River is the longest pedestrian bridge in the world. Now, if you ever think about architecture, you should come by. There is one square kilometer in this, on this globe where seven laureates of the Pritzker Prize of architecture have built a building. Frank Gehry's first building in Europe was built in Weil am Rhein. The Iraq uh, architect, Saha did built two of them in my town. So if you ever come to visit, you're more than welcome. Let me give you some idea how local government works in our part of Germany. The mayor is elected for an eight-year term directly by the people. And I am working together with the city council, which is elected for five years. And uh, they are voted in on proportional vote, which means for every decision that I'm trying to find, I have to seek for majority within the city council. That makes it very important that you get close together, that you discuss long time till you finally find a solution that suits as many people as ever possible. Some ideas about what the local authorities have as a function. We do all the city urban planning, which plays into child-friendly cities, of course. Uh, we have to uh, manage our facilities. There's 93 in my town. We, we own the schools. We have to maintain them. We are responsible for social affairs, for fresh water, for long distance and uh, local heating, uh, public transportation. We have an own port. And um, of course, we are dealing also with foreign nationals. That's a responsibility that the state has given to the local authorities. Um, and we are housing at the moment about 450 refugees, most of them coming from Syria. Some other fields of local responsibility I would like to mention is that we have to build and maintain kindergartens. That is uh, very significant since we have a tremendous amount of young children who, whose first approach to education is done through a kindergarten. We do this together with other operators like the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church and free groups that organize that from the, for themselves. We hold youth meeting places. We have their own buildings for that. I'll show some of them later on. We have social workers in school for kids who have trouble at school or with their parents, and then they can address that right in school. And we are holding programs for students during the vacation time. Kids in the summer have six weeks of vacations. Parents don't have six weeks of vacations. So there is something that has to happen with these kids, and we offer programs for them. I just mentioned the 19 kindergartens that we have in town for about 1,100, 1,200 toddlers. Um, we also have those playgrounds that are uh, necessary for kids of that age. All types of school are available, including two schools who are specially 
uh, organized for children with disabilities, be them physical disabilities or be them mental disabilities. And one of our high schools that we have is a German-French high school, which means kids pass their baccalaureate in French, uh, they, they pass their te final test and then they can go to university in France as well as in Germany. This is something I consider very important. Again, we're living Europe on a daily basis and this is why we want to do it that way. Just to give you an idea about finances, everything is funny when you talk about it. It really gets serious by the time you talk about money. You have to have the money. And uh, I salute my colleagues who managed to do so in their job. About uh, 23 million euro we spend a year for running expenses, turning around the question of youth, like uh, school, daycare, which is the big, uh, the big part, or even a music school that we have. The idea of child-friendly city came to Weil am Rhein through our international connections. My neighboring town in Switzerland, Rien, was part of child-friendly cities in Switzerland. And I met with my colleague and uh, he talked about it and I said, how does it work? He explained to me and we called into UNICEF Germany and we were the first German community to call into UNICEF about child-friendly cities. And uh, I think that was a good step that we did and we have worked, walked the way all the way through. After that first contact, we finally decided in the city council in July of 2013 that we will be able to have a survey among youngsters and uh, we walked with them through town. We picked various groups of several ages. We walked through town, asked kids what's good, what's bad, how does it work? And uh, we got a wonderful result out of that. Finally, we had workshops that we established, workshops which uh, permitted to get deeper into the subjects. These expeditions through town were full of surprises. We thought um, differently than the kids did. And I think one of the major lessons you can learn is look at your own city through the eyes of children. And they look at things differently than we do, the gray-haired people like me. And we came up with a to-do list for the administration. We uh, had an inclusion plan so that we could also include children that are not at the forefront of our first discussions. It ended up in an action plan that we established. We did a self evaluation of our own administration. We had a questionnaire handed out to all children in school that they returned to us. And we tried to have this process of participation to be as broad as ever possible. And finally, we had recommendations for our action plan. This action plan has two sides to it. There is one regarding participation and youth in governance. On the other side, there is the question of space in the public sphere. In this action plan regarding participation, we created a mission statement. That's very important for every part of your administration because you have administration that is dealing with other things than children affairs. So you have to make them aware and make them think about it and uh, have that extra click in their head when they start planning something. And we have established a control group, which means you need to check on the results. It's not only important to start something, but you have to be sure that these results are finally achieving. And we had to do some training for the employees. Uh, you have to have a seminar for them and you have to tell them what the mission is. And uh, I think we've managed on that quite frankly good. And finally, by the end of the day, we have created a budget for the youth and I'll explain that to you later. Space in the public sphere was important to us. So I talked about playgrounds, but we also wanted to make sure that there is something that the kids wanted and said we want to do. So they came up with the idea of a street workout park, which means where you can uh, do lift-ups and uh, uh, other things. It was on tele German national television yesterday morning when they were broadcasting on this uh, uh, Congress here. Uh, they came down to Van am Rhein and, and, and filmed that. It's really very popular and now other parts of town have asked to have the same thing. So this is really 
growing and growing. We have a shelter wanted by the kids, that's what we did. And finally, we had a program for kids who want to do sports at night. Uh, usually we like to have kids work, be in clubs, the soccer club, the football club, whatever, the tennis club, but there's also kids who do not want to join a club, and we opened up our gym halls at night uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, it's open, so that they can go and play and even in the night. And finally, we have a city planning along the Rhine River, which means uh, we have to include children in the question, how does that work? How can the results be there? As all of that, we in received in 2014 the award, Child Friendly City. We were number three in Germany at the time. And we are now on the step to the second phase. That second phase will be concluded November 5th, when we will receive the award for the second time, because we continued. For me, some of the conclusions I want to send out to you is, this is whole thing is a process. It's not a child-friendly city tomorrow morning, stop, full stop. No, it's a process. Therefore, you have to keep on doing it, and you have to keep implementing it, and uh, make sure that your structures permit that to happen. One thing I really would like to address is, since it has a long-standing history in my town, it's what we call a youth assembly or youth parliament. It was founded in 1993, and youngsters to the age of 20 years are permitted to run for that parliament. They are eligible, and we had a turnout last time of 15%. This is rather low, but we've had it higher too. And this parliament is now sitting with 18 seats, 26 candidates there were, and they have the right to participate in our local community life by sending messages to the city council. They can be heard. If they ask for it, they get the right to speak up in committee, and that is something that they make good use of. We have also given them some financial resources, 2,000 uh, 2, euro, that's not too much, I know that, but it's absolutely up to them what they do with it. They have to, of course, learn by that way that the budget is always limited and that the budget needs to be clearly defined who you spend money with. We have youth places which are under construction. I just showed you uh, to the left side, there's one that is uh, going to vanish, to the one to the right, just been established three years ago. And we broke ground the other day for a project that will cost around 10 million euro, including the building, sports facilities that are next to it, that are open to every child, not only those who are included in any sports club. Participation to us is very significant. You see down, down there that street workout park, but we included youngsters also in our city planning along the Rhine River, a planning that we do together with our French colleagues. They plan their riverside, and we jointly have a European Union project to uh, improve our access to the water. Everybody who has a river in his town knows where there is water, there is life, there's things happening. Uh, that's a good way to improve your, your city. And that's what we are doing by including youngsters to tell us what types of action fields do you want there. At the moment, we are just discussing about uh, beach volleyball, we're talking about uh, uh, basketball court and all that. But we will have the youngsters tell us what their ideas are. And last the thing that I would like to mention is we have a music school with about 1,900 students. And our program includes that every child in elementary school has the right to access to an instrument. They will not own the instrument. We would give the instrument to them to learn, to practice, and then maybe find out that music is their way. And music, of course, to me, that's something that works in every surrounding. Then again, you will not be able to tell is that one playing the violin, a German, a Frenchman, a Swiss, whoever. It's music that's binding the world. Last thing that I would like to mention. Um, we will receive this award upcoming November, 5th of November, for the second time. Please 
make yourself if you do undertake this journey to, uh, to the child-friendly city. Make sure that you turn your experiences that you see these days here in Cologne into a reality, and then you have won. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.